Hi friends, this is Lauren from DMG School Project in St. Petersburg, Florida. Today we're going to do glass blowing demonstrations for you on how glass blowers use gravity as a tool. We're going to do three different demonstrations. The first one, we're going to use centrifugal force by spinning out the glass. And here we have Dan Alexander gathering molten glass out of our glass furnace. In his hand he has a blowpipe and he just got his first gather of molten glass on the blowpipe. This glass is about 2100 degrees and it's actually clear glass. It just looks this bright orange whitish color because it's so hot. Now most of the time when we're blowing glass the beginning process is the same with almost each piece and that we gather the glass, shape that first initial gather and then put a bubble into the glass. So there he blew into it and he is waiting for the air to come through to create this bubble. Now he's going to go ahead and shape this initial starter bubble and then he's going to let it cool down to gather over it. Now that we have our second gather, we're going to do the same thing in shaping this glass, expanding that bubble a little bit, and then continue to make our shape now that we have the amount of glass that we need to make this object. Now remember, we're talking about gravity here, and you can see that any time he moves that blowpipe, um, gravity is affecting it, and you'll notice he's always turning. If he stops turning for even a split second, the piece will fall off center, and you can see the piece is kind of moving around, um, and that piece is moving around because it's following gravity. It's molten glass. So this glass here is probably about 17 or 1800 degrees. And he's going to hold it straight up and down as you see with the glass in the air and that creates um, a wider bubble shape, almost like a bowl. And he made that bowl shape just by holding it up and capping the glass which is um, how most bowls are made as gravity plays a huge role in that. And here, we're going to put a foot on the bottom of this bowl. And again, we're going to use gravity to let this molten glass drip onto the bottom to create this foot. Now the glass that we're dripping on is about 2,000 degrees. And the bowl itself is probably about 1,200 degrees. So you can see the temperature change of the color of the clear glass. The hotter the glass, the more orange or whitish it is. And the cooler the glass, you can see the true color. So we see that that bowl shape is clear, and the foot that we just put on the bowl is the hottest part, and it is molten. And now you can see that it's kind of frozen up or become a solid, and we're gonna do a punty transfer which means we are going to take this bowl off of the blowpipe and stick it to the punty pipe so then we can shape the top of it. This piece of equipment here that we're going into is called a glory hole and this glory hole is known as a reheating chamber for the glass. The glass has to stay a hot molten temperature in order to shape it and manipulate it. And again, using gravity here, he's turning with a pretty fast and forceful turn here to open up that bowl. And he's going to reheat it again to make sure he has enough heat because once that glass hits the frozen temperature of a thousand degrees, you can no longer shape it. So this glass has to stay well over a thousand degrees to continue to shape it. And I know we've already said this, but as you notice, he's still turning. He is always turning the pipe or the punty pipe 
um, to keep the glass on center. So now he is going to use centrifugal force and spin that out into a plate. And then now we're going to use gravity to let it fold down the lips of that plate and give it the scalloped um, looks around the center. So here it is again. You can see the centrifugal force and gravity creating the scallop shaped bowl. Wow, ooh la la. Now this piece is complete and we're about ready to put it into the kiln or an annealer. So he's gonna break it off here and I'm gonna catch it with Kevlar gloves and a Kevlar hat on my hair so that my hair doesn't burn. And we're gonna put this in a 920 degree kiln. Now we're gonna you do the second demonstration which is actually swinging out the glass to elongate it. Now, as we talked about earlier, the beginning process of most every blown piece starts the same. We gather the molten glass out of the furnace onto the blowpipe, and then we put that first initial starter bubble into that molten glass. to the first video which we talked about turning and you notice that he has not stopped turning this tool that he's using this table is called a marver table and it shapes and cools the glass at the same time now you can see that the piece when it comes out of the glory hole here it is pretty long it's an elongated bubble and he's gonna go into a mold here that's about the same shape as that elongated bubble and this mold has that textured look it kind of looks like mountains along the glass now and he's holding that pipe at an angle and letting it basically drip down. Um, it's kind of like dripping honey. So if you had honey on the tip of a pencil and you held that pencil up, the honey would drip off. Molten glass moves a lot like honey. Again here, he's holding it up and letting it elongate just by using gravity. way and he's definitely got the right temperature because if it was too hot it would just swing right off that pipe it would be kind of like liquid honey just dripping um, but it's all about temperature control here and he's gonna swing it again and you can watch it is just elongating with that swing
Now that he has the length that he wants, he'll continue to shape it. Dan here makes glass blowing look pretty easy. He's been blowing glass about 16 years. And we're gonna do that punny transfer again, the same kind of punny transfer we did on the bowl, where we take it off the blow pipe and put it on a punny pipe. That way we can shape the top or the lip of the piece. We're flattening the lip of the piece and making sure it's all level or even. Now we're ready to put it in the annealer with the other piece. Now they'll go in the same kiln. Again, that kiln is 920 degrees. And we'll anneal these pieces for about 30 hours. They'll come down to room temperature slowly. our third demonstration on gravity today, we're going to actually drip the glass off of the pipe. We've been talking a lot about how we're always turning to keep it on center and to keep the glass on the pipe. Well, we want to show you what happens if you actually stop turning the glass. So here I am gathering up. So far I've got two solid gathers, there's no bubble in this, we're on a punty pipe, and we're just going to get a large amount of molten glass on this punty rod. And for extra funsies, we're going to drip it on wood, because if you can create fire with molten glass and wood, why not? So what happens if I stop turning? It just drips. It's following gravity. Now this molten glass dripping off the pipe is about 2100 degrees. Now I will say do not try this at home. Um, we are professionals, trained professionals with um, the right equipment around us and the correct ventilation. And the fire just adds a little bit of fun for, um, for us and for you. But you can see this glass went from the molten temperature to a solid temperature in about 30 seconds. That was so much fun and I hope that you had fun learning with us today. Thank you.